I love God and I love you too. Praise God, son. I said, I love God and I love you too. Mm-hmm. Uh, put on the screen for me. Got to get right into the Word of God. Put on the screen for me. First Corinthians 13, 13. I'm gonna try to. We're gonna try to OD on the Word tonight. It's so good to see you. And may I tell you that you are God's daughter or God's son. All you born again folks in here, it is my prayer for you is that you begin to have more of a sense of who you are. And I, I pray that you stop giving people power over your life that oftentimes they didn't ask for in the first place. Stop letting people have you jumping through hoops. They ain't in charge of nothing. The earth is the Lord's. Say amen to that. And so I pray that you'll be so comfortable in your own skin until you won't be going around here politicking in the church as if you're trying to run for something. Amen to God, brother. That's, that's Donald Trump and, and Biden. They're running for something. But you're running for your life. Say amen to that. Right? And so God bless you, heart. I pray that you'll get full of faith and full of hope, full of love, and, and that we'll do it God's way. Now, <clears throat> now by this faith, hope, charity, which is love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? <laughs> charity. Charity. Um, also, um, tonight, uh, I want to remind you that faith, hope, and love, and divine love are the three things that will abide eternally. They're going to abide forever. Faith, hope, and divine love. All three of these divine concepts, when followed, will lead to a life of holiness, love, and eternal hope. And by the way, when you're full of hope, you don't go around depressed all the time. I used to have a bout with depression, and I didn't realize that one of my problems was I lost hope. If you, when you're hoping for something, it'll make you get up early in the morning. When you're hoping for something, you're, you're expecting something to come. So you, you, you can't just give up and give in on what's going on around you negatively. If you don't like what it is, keep hoping that it's going to get better. And not only the hope that it's going to get better, say it's going to get better. As a matter of fact, raise your right hand to everybody. Say, things are going to get better for me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah, you're going to call that in on your own, sir. Praise God, brother. And when you, when you are full of faith and full of hope and full of love, depression can't hold you, anger can't hold you, poverty can't hold you, amen, because... Those three laws give you the ability to walk out whom God uh, has made you. Uh, these laws also will uh, cause a man to fulfill the call God has placed upon his or her life and will end up, and they'll end up blessed and favored by God. But all bets are off. If you, if you think, listen to this carefully, if you think that you can have the best that God has for you without having faith, forget about it. You lost your mind. If you think you can, can receive what God has for you and you don't have hope, forget about it. It's not going to happen. And if you think you're going to receive what God, God has for you and you don't have love, forget about it. But when you operate in those three, beloveds, and you can do this, if you operate in those three, then you will fulfill the destiny that God has uh, supplied, uh, uh, has a plan for, for your life. Now, <clears throat> now, there's going to be a move of God, as I said to you earlier. The power of God is going to move mightily. Folks are going to get convicted. They're going to get converted. They're going to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. The sick are going to get healed. Folks are going to pay their tithe. They're going to have plenty of money. And um, you're going to be shining for God. I mean, people are going to look at you on your job. They're going to say, Woo, your face is glowing. How about shining because of the glory of God that's resident in your life? Amen. You're not going to have that old dried look like some of y'all got tonight. I'm going to start bringing lotion in here and say, Hey, you. 
You come up here and put some on your face. You dusty rascal. You come on up here. No, that's, 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 that's he's, you know. No, uh, the, the anointing takes the grumpiness out of you. You can't be grumpy anointed. All grumpy people either has lost faith, lost hope, or lost love. And, and it makes you grumpy. It takes the smile off of your face, bro. But God's getting ready to help somebody even tonight. Now, there's going to be a move of God uh, in the body of Christ, and I'm going to be a part of it. I don't know about y'all. Anybody, anybody know you're going to be a part of it? I've already announced it that I'm going to be a part of it, praise God. But it's going to take three things to see it done, and uh, uh, two of them are glaring. Um, one is a lack of faith will, will prevent God from moving for you. I don't care how nice you are and how well-meaning you are and, and, and how many problems you had come into your life and you've been treated badly by life and, and what have you. But if you're going to deal with God, the Bible is clear, but without faith, what is it? So if, you, if you're not operating in faith, the devil's going to beat your brains out. What did I just say? He's going to beat your brains out. You're not going to get anything done. So, so, so you've got to get your faith level to the place where you can receive what God has for you, but without faith, but without faith. Put on the screen for me, uh, St. Matthew 13, 58. We're going to be using this verse right here, a few verses repetitively, because I found out that, that a lot of people go to church, they're not operating in faith. That's why they always need somebody to counsel them. They're always talking about they going through something and things are bad and they, they just need somebody. What they really need is faith. And then you got some people who think that they're the answer for everybody. And then you got other folks who are looking for somebody to give them an answer, and they both end up on a sinking ship. People need to learn how to operate in faith if they plan to receive from God. Say amen to that. Everybody read verse 50. Read, please. So unbelief will prevent God. Listen, listen. Unbelief will prevent God from doing for you what you need to have him do. God has put a governor on himself. He's governed by uh, the law of faith. Where he finds faith, he moves. Where he doesn't find faith, he can't move. He can't do it because he's put that stipulation on himself. And he can't violate it. I don't care how well-meaning you are and how pitiful you are and, and how, how, what kind of sad story you have. If you don't come up with some faith, uh, shall I say, use the faith that God has given you, which is the, the, the measure of faith, why, then it will paralyze God. And, and uh, Jesus himself, and it, this, this is just, it, uh, it goes deep into my soul when I think about this here, that Jesus himself, Christ the anointed one, could not do any mighty work because of unbelief. I have a question for you. I, do you think that unbelief would have an impact on this ministry right here? Of course it will. I don't care how you yell and how, how anointed you think you are and you got some kind of catchy phrase you're going to give and you're going to give the Greek and the Hebrew and all of that. It ain't going to mean nothing if you're talking to a bunch of unbelievers. Because unbelief will paralyze the power of God. And uh, we don't want that to happen in your life nor in my life. Say amen to that. So we got to have faith. Raise your hand so we got to have faith. Amen. But tonight we're going to talk about, and uh, our focus tonight is going to be on love. Because, listen, it's two things in, that I've observed over the years in, in Bible reading. Wherever God moves, it's going to require those two things, faith in God and a love relationship with God and with people. An unloving church will never experience the fullness of God's anointing. Just can't do it. Because God is a unity God. 
And all these folks run around, oh, I don't like him, I don't like her. You may be saved, but you're not going to enjoy the anointing of God. Can't do it. It's a waste. And the reason why we got all these mad churches in Southern California and across America, 15 people, 35 people, been passing 40 years, 40 people, because they're mean. There's some mean booger wookers standing in the pulpit, sitting in the pew, just as nasty, just as grumpy. They talk about people all the time. They criticize people, try to run games on people. And they, they, don't, have sense, they don't have enough sense to know that, that God is looking right at them. I mean, looking right at them while they are lamblasting somebody that Jesus died for. Whoever you are lamblasting, I want you to know that God loves that person just as much as he loves you. And we've got to get over that so we can love people in spite of them. Praise God. See, church people hate sinners. God hates sin. Did you catch that tonight? A lot of church people hate sinners. They hate, they hate sinners. God hates sin. He loves sinners, but he hates sin. A lot of church people hate sinners, but they love sin because that's what they keep on doing. They keep on sinning and all the time when they can't stop. They can stop what they want to. But you've got to have faith to come out of sin. You can't come out of sin just because you, you ought to. You have to trust in the redeeming blood of Jesus to redeem you. And you've got to trust in the power of the Holy Ghost that regenerates you. And then you've got to get full of the word of God that can keep you. That word will keep you if you want to be kept. And so when you, when you put it in the blender, put it in that Holy Ghost blender, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, and the Holy Ghost. And you turn that thing on, glory to God, get it all mixed in, and then take a big glass of that, boy. Not a smoothie, but take a big glass of that. And you good to go. <laughs> you go out there and deal with the world without the devil tricking you. So, so we're going to talk about that love walk tonight. Turn your neighbor and say, you need to walk in love. Walk in love. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. God, let me hurry on here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Follow God. How many know you can't follow God being mean and nasty? Can't do it. Now, you can be saved and mean and nasty, but you can't walk with God with a lot of unforgiveness in you. Praise God. You have to get that out. You have to get it out of you. So therefore, be, follow God as, as dear children. Next, verse, verse 2. Read everybody. Walk in love. And just take a pen there for a moment. To walk in love one has to make a sacrifice of themselves to God completely. You can't hold nothing back. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, with the assistance, listen, with the assistance of the blood of Jesus and the assistance of the Holy Ghost, you can take authority over you. Your pride is one of the main things you got to take authority over. Because you can't operate in pride and love at the same time. Because in pride, somebody's going to do something that's going to make you mad. And you start thinking evil towards them. And you get, you get jettisoned out of the things of God. I'm not saying you're not saved, but you are not going to be a part of a mighty move of God until you get to where I'm talking right now. All right, St. Matthew 22. St. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Got to get these scriptures in. And I, Did I tell you I love you all tonight? I, yeah. as, as long as you know I love you more than you love me, I'm good. Anybody going to challenge me on that? 
<laughs> Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37. Next verse. Thank you, sir. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. God wants to be first place in our hearts. He doesn't want us loving nothing and nobody more than you love him. And I found out in life, when you love God like this, you can't live in sin. Because the Bible told us, over oh, John, over there in First John, I think, chapter 2 of 1 John, around verse 14, 15, he said these words right here. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So if God tells you not to love the world, the potential is in your heart to love it. You got you to come out of the world of your own volition. You got to come out of the world. And, and, and see, this is where a lot of Christians don't, don't get where they need to be because they don't want to sacrifice. You got to make a sacrifice. Well, what about my husband? Well, what about your husband? What about my wife? Well, what about your wife? What, well, what about the pastor? Well, what about the preacher? What about you? I always worried about what everybody else said. Well, did you hear about that? We're going to hear about you too. Amen, brother. The only thing that prevents a person from losing weight is that they don't want to stop eating the wrong thing. They can, they can fight that. I say it on Lucy. No, say it on you, Lucy. You, you loose. Am I right about it? And if you're going to go with God, it's going to cost you your life. Amen. And, 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 and listen, God, all, all God needs you to do is make the decision to give your life up. Yeah, Pastor, yeah, that's hard. Never said it was easy. Because... If it were easy, everybody would do it. It's something. It's something to give up the lust of your flesh and the lust of your eyes and the pride of your life. That's something. That's a big deal. There's nothing bigger in terms of your sacrificing for, for you in this life. And all sad people that you can know, the, the mad and sad people, the mad and sad people, they haven't made that decision yet. They're blaming everybody else and everything else for their condition, but they have not made that decision yet. They want to talk about what happened to them when they were a little girl and a little boy and when this happened and that happened. You can, you can bring all the excuses you want, but at the end of the day, it's going to be your own volition of your own decision. You're going to have to make a decision to give up your life 100 on the behalf of God. So what you have to ask yourself is this, is it worth it? Is it worth you giving up your life to God? Is it worth it? Some people don't think it is. Remember that rich young ruler came to Jesus and wanted to know what, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus read it to him and the Bible said he went away how? Sad and sorry. Why? Because he had a lot of stuff. People don't want to give their stuff up. They're trying to find a slick way. They're trying to be slick. You can't be slick with God. He's look, he look, he looking right at you. He know what you're thinking. He know everything about you. And you're trying to be slick. And just because you snook of the people, you can't snook of God. He's watching everything you think think everything you say and he knows your motive for doing it you can't run no game on him so i say to me myself and to you i pray that that we got enough faith in god to make the necessary sacrifice god told me one time he said listen you make it now or you gonna give it up after a while anyway everybody at some point you're going to give up the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and eating the wrong thing. You're going to give it up. I love ice cream. You can be laying in the bed, they won't give you no ice cream. 
nerves, because that's my stream. No. And you sitting there all stoked up, can't move. What you going to do? Nothing. All people who have sexual hangups, you're going to stop one day. Oh, yeah, you're going to stop. Birthday is going to stop you. You're going to give it up one day, land on that deathbed or drop in dead. You are going to give up the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The best thing to do is to give it up right now why it's worth something. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Some of y'all need to fold them up right now. Because while you still have some time left, make a sacrifice of your life to God. And it has to be motivated by love, by faith, hope, and love. You, you got to look at it and say, you know what? It's better for me to live for God than for me to be self-centered. Because everybody who has not made this transition, they are selfish to a man. So some of the folks watching me right now, they're not in here right now. They just watch them. All the stuff that folks watching, but we, we can say that they can't defend themselves. So just teasing y'all, stop. So by faith, you got to make your mind up that you're going to love God more than you love food, sex, being important, being rich, being famous. You got to love God more. I'm going to tell you right now, and I don't care how down you are tonight, how broke you think you are, or how black you are. It really doesn't matter. Anytime God can find somebody who will come out of the world, mm -hmm. he'll pounce on that right away. He'll, he'll start giving you grace and revelation. You, he'll start showing you stuff you never heard of before. He'll entertain you more than a video game. You video game player in there. He, he, he'll entertain you more than the Dodgers and the Lakers all rolled up in one. He'll entertain you more than it, and he'll give you more joy than any kind of a sexual encounter can do for you. And eating all them burgers and stuff, he'll give you more joy than everything. I'm telling you, God, and God can post so much love and joy in you until you say, God, I can't take no more. It'll bust your gut, boy. Um, you see, we're dealing with the creator of the universe. See, some of y'all think he's a nanby pamby God, but I want you to know that he's a creator of the universe. And he's hidden on you. And you come tell him, no, not right now. Check me out later, God. Right now, I got I to gotta make a run. After some old nappy-headed man or some old stick-headed woman or some sexual encounter or some, some food or something with your big belly. Self. You, you, that's, that's it. You hear what I said. I, ain't, I lost my filter tonight. I'm just coming after y'all tonight. Here it come. Amen, I God. Like it or love it. Here it is, brother. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody ever say hallelujah. hallelujah. I got to move on to this point, but it's, it's tough right here. Loving the Lord your God, what how much? All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. He wants you to love him with everything you got. Then now he can teach you. Praise God. Say amen to that. Amen. All right, now. Next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Next verse. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See, here it is right here. Here's right here. You start talking about love. If you're mad at anybody, you're mad at everybody. If you're jealous of anybody, you're jealous of everybody. If you're bad-mouthing anybody, you're bad-mouthing God and people too. This is a serious matter. This is... This, this, this is serious. I know what I'm talking about. God trained me in this area. When I quit my job, God let me know, you can't run around here holding grudges against nobody. I don't care what she does or he does. You're going to have to overcome it. 
and keep on loving. Because if you don't, you might be saved, but you can't, you can't walk with God. You, mean folks can't walk. How in the world are you going to be mad and, and, and bad mouthing and people and walking with the God of love? You're just going just gonna to make him walk with you. No, you're not. You lost your mind, too. Second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm going to try to get that. Let's get that in our soul. I want to raise your right hand and say, I love everybody. Say, I love my family. I love my friends. I love the saints of God. I love my enemies. I love everybody in the name of Jesus. Now, you need to say that probably some of y'all need to say that 1,500 times a week at least. I said, oh, that's so much. So you can get your soul programmed. You got to get all the hate out of your soul and get love down off in there. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Next verse, sir. Next verse. Read everybody. On these two commandments, hang on the Lord's promise. Hey, by the way, may I tell you tonight that you hear a lot of folks on TV, oh, America's going to have a revival. Oh, God's going to do this. And I'm saying to myself, he ain't going to do it until he find a, a, a group of holy, loving people. Well, we're going to have to go out and win souls of Christ. You ain't going to be nothing. You may go win souls of Christ, but you ain't going to touch the city with a bunch of hateful, divided people. You ain't going to, you can go preach on every corner every day, all day, until you sweat, brother. But you're not going to have an impact on the culture, except you do so out of a heart of holiness and a heart of love. I know what God can do. Yeah, I know you'll know all about that. But are you willing to pay for it? Got to pay. You got to pay. You want to you want to operate in the anointing of God? You got to pay. Pay what? Your life with your life. Mm -hmm. St. John 13, 34 and 35. We're talking about love tonight. St. John 13, 34 and 35. The Bible said these words. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. So God wants you to love everybody. Yeah, but these, these people get on my nerve because you're in the flesh. If people getting on your nerve, it's because you're full of pride. And instead of letting them get on your nerve, it ought to cause you to pray for them. Since you see something so much wrong with them, pray for them. Stop allowing the devil to use these people to take your victory. There are two kinds of people on this planet. Those who are victorious in Christ and those who have been victimized by the devil. Say amen to that. Two kinds of people. Those who are, who are being victimized by the devil are those who are victorious in Christ. Where are you? Where are you? Are you being victimized or are you victorious? Only two kinds. Only two kinds. You're either victorious in Christ or you're being victimized by the devil. And I'm not saying you're not saved, but you can't flow except you walk in the victory that God has given. In the interest of time, well, no, I better read this. I better read this. St. John 17, 14. St. John 17, 14, because this is an important point. I started to, to move on. But St. John chapter 17, verse number 14. I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Those of us who, who receive the word of God will be hated by people. And they'll hate you for no apparent reason. They'll just hate you because they're working with the devil. Verse 15. I pray not that thou should have taken them out of the world, but that thou should have keep them from the evil. I'm going to leave them right down there, surrounded by folk who hate them, surrounded by evil, but I want you to keep them. God can keep you if you want to be kept. You don't have to be a crook. You ain't got to be two-faced. You ain't got to back back. You can live it. Verse 16. Ooh, I love it. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Help me to say, I'm not of this world. Amen. I am, I'm just passing through here. I am on assignment. 
And I, I'm not down here to try to get no blessing. Your blessing huh, is on the way. Huh? God is huh, going to bless you. I think you need to Please, you need to go sit down somewhere. I'm not looking for no blessing. I'm looking for the blesser. Verse, eight, verse 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. In other words, I want them to be set apart for me. And the only thing that can do that is the word of God. Verse 18. And thou, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. God sent Jesus, and Jesus is sending us. And he didn't send us in the world just to try to get rich and famous, neither. We're here to do business for God. We're here to do ministry on the behalf of God. Verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. That's the same argument. Jesus said, I'm going to set myself apart because I want them to be set apart. You are not in the world to half be in the world and half in the church. God wants all of me. Will I give it to him or not? I know what he wants. How many know God wants all of you say amen? How many are holding on on God? Don't say nothing. Verse number 20, verse 20. Neither pray out for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. In other words, I'm praying for them, and when they go out and win other people to Christ, I'm praying for them as well because they're out there preaching the word. Verse 21. That they all may be one, as thy Father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. God does not want us to be two or three. He wants us to be one. Turn your name and say, God wants us to be one. He wants you to be one. Amen. He wants us to be one. He wants us to love each other and as one. Thank you, God. Now, if God wants us to be one, what do you think the devil wants us to be? Divided. He wants us to be snaky. He wants us to be a crook. He wants us to be against people. That's what he does. Verse 22. And the glory which thou gave me, I have, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. So Jesus is praying, Father, make them one. He didn't say, Father, make them rich. He didn't say, Father, make them famous. He said, Father, make them one. And matter of fact, raise, raise your hand before God. Everybody raise your hand. Say, Father, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Make us one. Make us one. Make us one. I'm telling you, make us one. I hope what I'm about to say don't offend nobody, but my filter that just by gone, so I just say stuff now. There. I'll tell you right now, for a black man to make it in this country, he's got to be a tough guy. Amen. He gets disrespected by the white man. He gets disrespected by Spanish-speaking people. He gets dis dis disrespected from the Chinese, the Koreans. He gets disrespect. You name it, the black man gets disrespect. Amen. He gets disrespected by his woman, and other black men hate him. Black men hate black men. They don't want to follow no black guy. Hey, man, the God. I'll tell you right now, brother, if you as a black man get something done in this nation, you're going to have to have your cross with you. You got to be real. Let's go for you black women too. For whatever reason, we hate it all over the world. All over the world. And then we have the nerve to sit up and fight each other. Turn your neighbors to have you lost your mind. Have the nerve to do drive-by. Have the nerve to be jealous just because somebody get a little piece of car. Look at him. He ain't home. Look at him. Look at him. Amen. 
We can't go into business together because we don't trust each other. Don't want to do a business together because we don't trust each other, jealous and envious. What would happen if every Latino family and every black family in the inner city would come together and pool their resources and work together and do business with each other? You can't leave folks in the church that day. You can't be telling me nothing. Because we just don't understand. You won't have to connect with somebody. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If you would, see, here's the key. Here's the key. What we need to understand is this. We need some holy, loving people to come together. And who ain't got to be the next pastor? I'm the pastor. No, you're not. You already got one. You heard what I said. You don't think I got the Holy Ghost? Yes, I do too. I got the Holy Ghost. It's okay to be number two. It's okay. It's okay to help somebody else fulfill the, the call that God had on their life. As a matter of fact, if you don't help somebody else reach that goal, you ain't going to reach yours because you pull somebody down, and when you get into a leadership position, the same thing is going to happen to you. God help black folk. And, these, and, and black folk in this country, our black leaders, our civil rights leaders, they spend more time arguing against the police when they should be telling black folk stop being mad with black folk. Amen. I love black folk. I love brown folks. I love all folk. I'm not going to let the devil turn me into a hater. I love everybody. And guess, listen, I have been dogged by black folk. Dogged. But the way that you, that, that you deal with them is, is love the hell out of them. Yeah. Keep on loving them and being nice to them. Because they, they don't know you know, see. They think, does he know? He's he being nice to me. He says, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm not going to let the devil use you to cause me to miss out on what God has for me. Because I can't hate on you and then get what God has for me. I, I, can't be, I can't be thinking evil towards you and bad-mouthing you and, and undercutting you and then don't think God is looking at me. How, 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 do you, how, how, does God, how does God bless a person if he doesn't know what they're doing? When you give your offering, don't you know God knows how much you give? You can ball that dollar up until they start crying, but, but God's going to know you only gave a dollar. That poor guy, what's his name on the dollar bill? Uh, uh, uh. You watch the TV, he's got, help, 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 help. Just squeeze that man. Don't, don't do him like that. <laughs> Amen. We need to stop all. Do, do you not know that 10 black men in this dimension right here could pool their resources and in 10 years they can have something? I tried to get that started one time and, and put people in charge of it. They wouldn't do it because they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. But you, you get 10 black men who will, and I, I stopped to get some gas today. You know what I found out? Their cigarettes cost about $12 a pack. That lady put two cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes on the counter, and the lady said, 20 something. I said, wait a minute here. <laughs> when I quit smoking, they were 40 cents a pack. Now they're up to, are you kidding me? I quit smoking before I got saved because I figured out I was smoking a pack a day and I could pay, almost pay my light bill. Back then, with 40 cents a pack, 20 some dollars a pack. Can you imagine if 10 black guys would stop smoking, stop buying six packs? Amen to God. Stop vaping. Stop going, spending money at the hotel. Yeah, said, come on, stay with me now. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And, and, and they don't have to have the spinning wheels on their car and, 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 and got to have certain rims. Just, that, just keep the rims that came on the car. It'll be okay. <laughs> and, and pool our resources and, and our 
ingenuity and start doing business with each other, we can have a conclave of wealthy black folk and nobody jealous and nobody worried about the fact that somebody going to get more than they get. Jealousy in the inner city is choking us out. Jealousy and envy. Ah, God. I found out when I quit my job, God told me, if you don't forgive these folks that hurt you, he said, I can't bless you. He said, I want to bless you, but I can't. If you don't forgive them, boy, did I start fasting and praying. I said, God, I'm mad with them boogers, but please grace me to forgive them. After weeks and weeks, it came. I learned it. And God loves you just like he loves me. And you are important. In this room right now, everybody in here, you are important to God. And people better watch how they treat you. And you better watch how you treat people. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, this is a very simple thing right here, but a lot of people don't get this. Do you not know you can't sow nothing except you sow it to a person? If you're going to sow some money, you just can't take the money. All right, God, come get this God. I'm going to give God some money. He hold, and God's big hand come out of the sky and get the money. No. You got to go through somebody. Got to deal with people. Glory to God, brother. And I'm claiming by faith tonight that I love my family members, my friends, and I love folks who don't love me. I love everybody. I ain't mad at nobody. And I don't care if you do get a bigger house, bigger car, or go past a bigger church. It don't make me no different. A man told me today, he said, I heard you on the radio with that preacher. I had uh, Pastor Napoleon Bryant on, on KK, on what is it, KJLH, KJLH. And he said, I heard what you said. And it got that old guy. He was a preacher. He was a preacher. He said, I heard you when you said that you didn't care whether he took some members out of loving unity. I said, no, I don't care. Let him take them. They'll get replaced. If not, I didn't need them. And I said, yeah, and I gave him over 13. You said, he said, 13. Sure did. I do that to work on my own pride. See, the way you work on your pride is you give stuff away. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and this Saturday, I raised money this Saturday to help some people who I know don't like me. Who I know don't want me to be the bishop over Metropolitan. I know they don't want it. And I know some of them don't even like me. But I gave them money anywho. Shut that da -da boo boo. To the tune of $1,000, I gave them Negroes. I gave them a G. G up in here, G G. And guess what happened the next day? A preacher said, you know what? I feel led to give you 10 G's. I said, give it here, give it here. You see, when you help people who don't like you, the stock splits. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. That's when the stock splits. And then all, all of a sudden you get money from all kinds of places because when you love your enemies and do things to help your enemies, God is watching. He said, what did that Brown Hill just do? He know them Negroes don't like him and he gave a thousand dollars. Angels sent somebody to give him 10,000. I can't have him doing that. See, ah, yeah, yeah. See, some of y'all don't help your enemies. But God said, you've heard how you're supposed to love your friends and hate your enemies. But God said, but I say unto you, love them who hate you and who despitefully use you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, when was the last time you did something for somebody you know didn't like you? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you prayed for somebody you know didn't like you? Y'all won't say nothing tonight. It's a lot of mean black folk. That's why their churches are broke. That's why they can't get no members in there.
because they mean. When you mean and nasty, you invite demons into your soul. Anybody who's mean and nasty, demons have the right to come to your house. Demons have the right to get off into your soul because you think just like them. Demons hate. And when you're a hater, you're saying, all right, demons, y'all, come on, take up residence right here. Turn your knees and don't be no hater. Mm-hmm. I'm right tonight, boy, I guarantee you. He will behold. Verse 23, verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. See, I can't really grow as a person except I grow by rubbing in contact with you people. I got to have somebody to shine me up. I need somebody to lie on me, and I find out they lied, and see, can I still love them? <laughs> I, I need somebody to borrow my money and don't pay me back, and see, can I let them have some money the next time? Shonda Bade, Koronte Bade, I heard him when he said these words right here. They had beaten him and had whipped. They had beaten him and they had whipped him and they had pulled the flesh from his bones. He was bloody. Spikes in his hands and in his feet. And I heard him say something like this here. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. How many of you would have said that? Somebody said, Father, send lightning down here. Just, 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 like, just like them apostles did. Them apostles did. They went to a city and they told Jesus and the apostles, get out of here. And they said to Jesus, call down fire. Burn these boogers up. And God said, no. Jesus said, no, no. You don't know what kind of spirit you come from, see. See, so that's why God's got to be able to trust you with power and you won't misuse it. You got you to let God know I'm going to love people. I don't care what they do to me. Seeking you go seven days. They don't say nothing bad about nobody. Raise your right hand, everybody. Raise it. Say, God, grace, grace me to go seven straight days and don't say nothing bad about anybody. And then I'm going to see who's going to testify and say they made it. Some of y'all ain't going to make it out of the sanctuary. Before you get to your car, you're going to be telling me, man, I'm right today, boy. I guarantee you this hill. All right. Now, now, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And, and, and a lot of our brothers and a lot of our white brothers in America today, they're running around talking about America's coming back and we're going to see a great revival. And I want to tell white preachers and white Christians this. If you got the wrong spirit towards black folk, you ain't going to get nothing. Y'all can say, hey, man, don't be scared. They ain't going to come over and get you. <laughs> ain't nobody got no white sheep riding out there right now. You can say, <laughs> turn your name and say, you can say amen, amen. <laughs> I love me some white folk. I have some wonderful white friends who have been very nice to me in a variety of ways. But I know this for a fact. I heard a white preacher today talking about this football player who made some statements about women being married and in the home, and, and he talked about how blessed it was, and, and he said that football player was a kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs, and he said, oh, they, they talked about him and gave him a hard time, and, 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 and then he said, not like Kaepernick. Said they celebrated Kaepernick, and I'm yelling at the radio, not all of them celebrated Kaepernick. They wouldn't even give him no job as a quarterback no more. What are you talking about, white man? See, if you don't know, people just slant stuff and, and, and throw you off. Yeah, what Kaepernick don't, did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done. He had the right not, not, uh, not to stand up for the flag if he wanted to. But when the white boy stood up for what he believed in, oh, he's wonderful, wonderful. But the black guy, he ain't no good. The devil is a lie. And our white brothers, everybody raise your right hand and say, God... Reveal to our white brothers 
that they're not going to have revival and leave us behind. Turn your neighbor and say, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> you got to come over here and come to and deal with us. You think just because you fly all the way to Africa, learn African language and over there eating bugs and all that stuff, you think that gets you in good. But you're going to have to come to Compton, white boy. You got to come and knock on some doors with us over here. If you say you love us, come over and show us. And bring me some money. Y'all have to pray for me. I, I told you I lost my filter. It's gone. It's gone. Boy, you, what, you, whatever's off in there, here it come. Unfiltered. Unfiltered. Y'all still love me today? I mean, right, watch this here. Watch this here. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were where? They were not all sitting off there mean mugging each other. They were not mean mugging. They were not jealous. They were all, they were all with one accord. They had come into agreement. Love and unity, we must come into agreement if we want to see the glory. You got to, you got to use your faith to fight these devils and demons so they won't be able to stop you from being blessed of God. We're going to get out of the lace, so don't say nothing. Do hey, you hear what I said? Don't have me to come out there. <laughs> I love y'all today. Romans chapter 12. And then I'm going to do this real quick. Romans chapter 12. Had yeah, I not been doing all that talking, I could have got this in. It's running my mouth like that around there. Romans chapter 12. To expedite time, let's put in at verse number 12. Romans 12 and 1. 12 and, 12 and 12. Excuse me. 12 and 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Now, if we're going to see the glory of God, you got to keep on hoping for it, and then you have to be patient when th something bad happens. Something, bad, something bad happened to all kinds of folk. But just because something bad happens to you, that's no reason for you to go home and quit. The old boy used to say to me, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I remember years ago they had this poster with this cat hanging on to something, and the, and the, and the caption said, hang in there. You know, sometimes you just got to hang in there. You can't make no public progress, but don't go back. Hang in there. Don't quit. And then it said, keep on praying. We need folks to pray. Do you not know one of the best ways to show people you love them? Or should I say, one of the best ways to express love for people is to pray for them. I used to tell people all the time, please live holy, then pray for me. Because if you start praying for me, you ain't holy, you may be releasing demons on me. But live holy live holy and pray for me because the effectual fervent prayer of a holy man availed much and, and you know something friend that's showing love to people guess who else you're showing love to God because you're giving God an opportunity to bless the people that he loves but God has to have somebody in the earth to live right and pray for everybody. How yeah, yeah. I was telling the guy the other the guy I was in leaving the parking lot the other day. I said, hey man. I said, listen, if God says he got, got a blessing for Monday and he got another one for next Monday, I said, you know what? You gonna get yours first. I'll wait. Cause I wait. Because I, I realize that if I become a blessing, automatically I'm gonna get one. See, a lot of folks come to church and all they think about is me, 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 me. You got to come to church to find out how can you become a blessing instead of always worrying about your relationship and your money and ain't happy. Go sit down somewhere. The church is full of that kind of foolishness. We need folks who are concerned about God and others. I'm right tonight, boy. Verse 13. I got to move on. Verse 13. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving, giving to us to be nice to people. 
be nice to people. And if you can help them, help them. How many know that what goes around come around? How many know if you sow it, God's going to grow it? You're going to reap what you sow. And you find that old sad, mad people, they self-centered. They ain't doing nothing for nobody but themselves. And you want to look out for yourself, you're going to get sad and mad. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. They talking about you, trying to put your name in the dirt. Bless them. And don't you curse them. Verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Somebody happy to be happy with them. They start crying. You start crying. You crying today. <laughs> Verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Humble yourself. Don't always have to have the last word. Years ago, God taught me. He said, listen, if a man goes fishing and he catches a fish that weighs 25 pounds and his friend come in the next day and said, man, man, I caught a fish. Man, it was 15 pounds. Shut your mouth about your big fish. Don't even tell him. He said, 15 pounds. Oh, man, that was a big old fish. Let that man have his day in the sun. You ain't got to try to put everybody down. Everybody, I call, well, man, I, I, I did something. Oh, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Let me tell you about me. That's the ugly spirit. Like the man was talking about himself. Just kept talking about himself. And just kept talking about himself. You know what? I'm tired of talking about me. You talk about me for a while. <laughs> That's the way some people are. Verse 17. Verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. And just because somebody do you bad, don't do them bad. Don't, don't pay people back. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Don't be no crook and no thief. If you're in business, don't try to get rich off of one customer. Verse 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. Follow peace with all men and Holiness without which? Verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Stop trying to get people back. Stop it. But rather, give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Vengeance is God. A lot of men right now in prison doing 25 to life because they went to get somebody back. And they've had 20 years to try to figure out why I didn't just let that go. Some things you just need to let it go. You'll get over it. Come stepping on my shoes. Go get them shined again. Bent my car. Go get it fixed. Don't go to jail or go something stupid. Verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him a drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Now, them people think that means you're going to burn the head. No, during that time, they would keep warm by getting a pan and putting coals in the pan. And in the wintertime, they would stay warm like that. You're not going to be witchcraft for nobody to make their hair still on, catch on fire. Stop that foolishness. Say Amen. Next verse, read. Y'all can read that better than read it again. <laughs> Treat people right. This is my last point. My last point. Treat people. Listen, don't, don't miss this. Treat people the way the Bible told you to. And I found out, it took me years to find this out. Because when God said, love your enemy, I said, I don't feel no love toward them. And God says, it's not feelings, it's an act. Love is an act. And, and the key is, treat God the way the Bible told you to. Treat yourself the way the Bible told you to. And treat people the way the Bible told you to. And I guarantee you, 
this word is designed for your crucifixion. This word is designed for your death to yourself. This word is designed to strip you of enjoying your flesh so you can operate where in the spirit. And I always remember this, in the spiritual world that you can't see, the spiritual world is exact. It ain't no, it ain't no rules breakers in the spiritual world. Trust me. Trust me. In the natural world, you do it. I almost got a ticket today. I almost got a ticket today. I was in that uh, diamond lane. Not, is it diamond lane or that lane where you can be in uh, with, with the yeah, fast track? I was in fast track, so I'm trying to go to a meeting. I just had to come on out of there. And guess who was behind me? Popo. He got up on the side of me and rolled his eyes, too. I started sambooing on him. <laughs> Mr. Popo, don't give me no ticket. Amen to God. So, so sometime in the earth realm, you can break the laws and get away with it. But not in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everything is perfectly ordered. And every spiritual being in the spiritual world honors this word. Because if they don't, they get hurt. Uh, uh, an idiot tried that by trying to overthrow God's kingdom. And one third of God's angels got in agreement with that, that, that renegade. And that renegade and all them angels that were angels became demons and devils got kicked out of heaven. And they, they, they scatter God. That man that was in the tomb that saw Jesus coming, he said, I know who you are. You, you, Jesus, are you coming to torment us before the time? Why do you think he said that? Because he know he got it coming. They don't go up into the spiritual world fooling around. And, and you had better not go up there either fooling around because you can, get, you can get hurt real fast. If you go up into that spiritual world and them demons see you in there, and they see you in there and you ain't dressed right, that's a quick way to lose your mind. You're going to go around speaking in tongues act, act as if you're so righteous and you're, you're a snake on the side. But watch yourself. Because you go up in that spiritual world and you start dealing in that spiritual world, you better go up in there fully equipped with this word right here and let them demons know, I know who I am, I know whose I am, and I am skillful in using the name Jesus. If the word of God will help you tonight, clap your hand and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Our Father, I pray as our Savior prayed, Father, make us one. I pray for everybody online tonight and those who are here in the sanctuary. Give us the divine ability to see the necessity of love. It's not that we ought to love. If we're going to walk with you, we have to. It's a must. Take away all the anger and pride out of us and, and bless us to love people with your love and to see them through your eyes. Bless us to know that we must present our bodies a living sacrifice. Jesus, you said, if any man come after you, walk in your footstep that we must deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow. God, I pray for my family. Bless the Hill Clan to love the Hill Clan. Those who have problems, bless us to carry them. In this ministry, bless us all to love each other. And somebody have a problem and we recognize it, bless us to take ownership of it and to intercede for our brothers and sisters. We don't know what caused them to be the way they are. We don't know what they've gone through. We don't know what pain that they have suffered in life. We don't know what they've heard. We don't know what they've seen. We don't know what they've felt. And we don't have the moral authority to pass judgment on them. So tonight, bless us to forgive. Some heaven said, God bless me to forgive myself 
and to forgive everybody else. Deliver me from self-hatred in Jesus' name. One more time, clap your hand and say praise the Lord. All right. I'm ready to go home just like you are. You did a little overtime tonight. Let me thank y'all for coming tonight. Do we have any first-time guests in here tonight? Anybody for your first time? Your first time, please stand. And who invited you? Oh, thank you. Your name is David? Okay. Have you got Christ in you already? Well, thank you for coming. Would you please come again? All right, let's give a man, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. All right, let's prepare ourselves. Oh, we have another, I'm sorry. And, and, and your name, and who invited you? And who invited you? Your friend. With God bless you. Do you have Christ in your heart already? Well, everybody give him a hand and say thank him for coming. Thank you for coming, sir. <laughs> we feel special when we have guests. And thank you. So everybody prepare yourself. Sisters, would you pay tithe and give Arkham us tonight? Mm -hmm. What are you going to give? Because my little cash is plenty right now. And so you got to carry me, mother. Oh, see. You got to carry me tonight, all right? I appreciate you, man. I love y'all tonight. Please read your Bible fast and pray fast and pray. And what else? Romans has been good this week. Matter of fact, I woke up early this morning. And I said, well, since I'm up, I might as well go and get in the Word. And I got in the Word, and it was a blessing. Oh, by, by the way, those of you watching online, would you send your offering in tonight? You can give by texting the give. You can get a website or do snail mail. But please, sir and ma'am, uh, plenty find that you see it in this anointing, a word that's designed to help us do better as the people of God. Amen. Things are going to get better. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to pray. You're going to fast and pray. And God is going to speak to your heart. And God is going to reveal to you the things of God. Revelation is going to come to you. Inspiration is going to come to you. Motivation is going to come to you. You are going to do well. Somebody in here is getting ready to grow up in God. Who am I talking about right now? Amen. All right. Please stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you for the word of God tonight on love. Oh, I thank you that we're going to grow stronger and stronger in faith. We're going to grow stronger in hope and in love. We are going to see a great move of the Holy Ghost in this ministry. Folks are going to be coming from the north, the south, the east and the west. They're going to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Sick bodies are going to get healed. We're going to cast the devil out. It's going to be a lot of dancing and singing in Jesus' name. Folks are going to pay tithe to give offerings and wealth. Wealth is coming on us by faith in Jesus' name. Repeat after me, beloved. Let us love one another. The love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Please come and share tonight. God bless your heart.